Talk about love. No, not that type of love. But real love. Love. Do you love your country? Okay, after 9 11 happened, there are people who went to the military, joined the military, because they wanted to right this wrong done to us when they flew the, the flew airplane planes into the twin towers god damn it people love this country and wanted to fight for this country okay mr soldier let me tell you something ask you this you love your country right you love your family would you join the military and go fight against the ones who flew the planes in the ten, Twin Towers if they only paid you minimum wage. And when you came back and when the war was over, you didn't get any severance benefits, any pay whatsoever. You had to go back to your civilian life and get a job at McDonald's or wherever and support yourself and your family on that. Would you have gone to war against these people? For that? If the answer is no, you love your country, but you don't love your country enough. Not enough to sacrifice like that. And love is sacrifice. Is it? So you, you don't love your country enough then. But you love your country. Okay. Mother. Dear mother, you love your children. You would give your life for your children. Wouldn't you? Of course you would. You love your children. Let me ask you this. Would you be willing to burn in hell forever and ever? If they were going to burn in hell forever and ever, unless you took their place. If the answer is no, you don't you love your children enough. You love your children, but you just don't love them enough. There's no such thing as selfless love. Not even with God. Let me ask God. God? Holy Spirit? No, God, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit? Would one of you be willing to burn forever and ever in your own lake of fire and out of darkness if doing so would save your entire creation? To your glory. If you don't, if you wouldn't, you do not love your creation with the infinite selfless love. So you see, love is an illusion. Families don't even love their families enough to put up with their little irritations at home. Honey, why do you always leave the toilet seat up when you... Now, honey, why do you always leave the toilet seat up and don't put the toilet seat down? The wife always gets angry and mad and snarky with her husband. Son, why do you eat like that at the table? Uh, son, please, please quit talking about that. It, it ain't that some shit. When someone we love dies, we'd get if we give everything, quote unquote, to have them back. And yet, when we do have them, we just take it for granted. We don't love them while they're alive, but we sure as hell love them when they're dead. Something's fucked up, man. Human beings are stupid. But love, there's love. Yeah, people love, but is it a, is it an illusion? But selfless love, no such fucking animal. Not even with God. And look, bitch, don't you dare tell me not to ask God these foolish questions. You know why these questions are foolish? Because, no, no, if God's really real, there is an answer to every fucking question you can cook up, no matter how stupid. And if there's not an answer, maybe it's because God's hiding. Because God is not God. 
Because so if God is God, you can ask a question like this. Hey, God, if you had to choose between you or Jesus dying, going out of existence, who would you choose? Now, I know that's impossible to happen, but what if? And you ask God this question, and he gets angry at you. God, if the answer is there, why are you getting angry? Why are you hiding behind, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God? What you afraid of? Are you afraid of the truth? Don't you dare tell me not to ask such questions. Yes? Oh, I'm doing a video. That. Standing on another table. I didn't make a point. Yeah. Yeah. I wish God loved me eternally, unconditionally, infinitely. But hit set, folks, when reality hits, there's some things that, you know, just can't happen. Happen. Now God's love now God's love may be infinite in that fact that it's impossible for God to be damned or to go out of existence. But what if he could? How much does God love us? How much would he sacrifice of 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 himself for us. Three hours, six hours of suffering on a cross and being damned when you knew Satan could not hold you. That is not an infinite sacrifice. That's a sacrifice, yeah. But I'm kind of underwhelmed. I appreciate it, but I'm underwhelmed. And God, who is love, with whom nothing is impossible. Who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's Bible. That's Bible. That's Bible. Unless, of course, that book was a forgery. Not written by Paul. I, scholars are not saying. But let's, say, let's take for granted that it is scripture. God, who wants all men to be saved. With whom nothing is impossible. Who is love. He that loveth not is... Not of God. For God for God is love. It says in the book of First John, God is love. Now I take that to mean God is God God just God does not simply love. He is love. He cannot stop himself from loving because he is love. So God, why in the hell are, why why is there beings in eternal damnation, forever separated from you. There's a way around it. If you're God and you, if you, if you truly know everything, you know of a way you can save them. And there's no way because it, and if it's impossible to save them. It's because you created this creation in such a way that it's impossible to save them once they're damned. So you didn't love us, love everybody enough. You love some, but not everybody. God is love. But here's what confuses me. In one of the books of the prophets, God is talking about, I don't, I don't know, is it Ephraim? Is it in Hosea or Micah? Where God says, I will love them no more. Now how in the fuck is this possible? God is love. Can the son say to Germany... When Adolf Hitler was uh, killing the Jews, can son say, "Oh, I'm not going to sign over Germany because you of what you're doing"? I refuse. To, no, the sun still shone just as beautifully over Germany when they were killing the Jews as it did over Mother Teresa or Billy Graham, Doctor Billy Graham, or America. God, are you even real? Something's fucked up. Fuck you, God. Fuck you. I just wish you loved everybody. Especially me. The only way I can save the fact, the saying that God is love, maybe, maybe God, maybe that's uh, uh, using speech to describe when God turns his back on you. He still loves you, but he turns his back on you. So that's what that's what somebody who hates you does turn you back on 
them, but I don't know. I can't find the words to describe what I'm trying to say. Maybe I would love them no more. Maybe what God does to them in turning his back. Maybe I would love them no more. Is their perception of how God is treating them. But not really how God is. But God can only reveal his love to you. Which means he loves you. But even when God hates you. He's always loved you all, all, always all the time. All along you just didn't know it. So... According to yourself, he hated you. But according to God, he still loves you. I hope that's I hope that's true. I need Jesus to be true, but love, it's just an illusion. Could it be that? Could it be that? It's just an illusion. Could it be bad? Could it be that? In all this confusion. Could it be that? It's just an illusion. Ah, could it be that it's just an illusion? Could it be that? Jesus, are you even real? All your Bible scholars are deconverting. All these Christians deconverting. What the fuck is going on? When I was in school, Christians could confidently say, Bible teachers, oh, if you don't believe in Christianity, just research the facts. I was told that there are people who are diehard atheists until they research the facts of history, 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 secular history, and they became Christians. Mr. John Dahl in the 10th grade said, oh, you don't believe Jesus is real? You want the evidence? Go, go, try to prove Christianity wrong, and you will find out that it is right. I firmly believe that with all my heart when I was... 16, 17, 18. But look at now the converse is, the inverse is happening. People, Christians, born again Christians who are researching the fact are deconverting. So Jesus, are you real? And you wonder why I use God's name as a swear word profusely. Because I don't fucking know. I'm not going to give my, I'm not going to give my, my life for something I don't know is real. And look, look, faith is faith when you have no evidence for something is okay. But having faith when the evidence totally points against it, like someone God telling you, hey, do you see this triangle? It's got four corners. And we can look at the fucking thing and trace the side to see it's got three goddamn sides. I'm still holding on to Jesus. I'm not going to give him up. But, you know, right now, don't expect me to go out, go out all gung ho for Jesus, when he's not go, when he's not going out all gung ho for me. You see, he won't even give me a shirt that there's life after death, that lasts forever and ever and ever. And this is plaguing my mind. I've had insomnia since 1997 because of this, and I cannot sleep without taking two 50 milligram treadmills because of this. I cannot sleep. And I cannot. I can only sleep. Still taking my medicine. I cannot sleep unless I have the perfect environment: a pillow, a nice, uh, not not too soft mattress, and not too hard. White noise. Let's fuck you, God, for this insomnia. Fuck you.